What's up, everybody? Welcome to this month's universe's tier list. My name's Tam, and I'm gonna be taking you through. I'm gonna be taking you through uh, my my tier list. Now, if you guys saw last uh, time we did this, last time we did this, um, I didn't like it, right? So I'm tired. I've decided to change some stuff. I think, I think tier lists in universes are lame. <laughs> I think it's actually bad content because there are 164 characters in the game at the moment. At, at the time of this recording, not including any any duplicates, right? No Fat Gum 2s, no two different copies of All Might 7, things like that. Or three different copies of All Might 7, excuse me. There's 164 characters. And, and spending about seven nanoseconds on, uh, on a character is lame. So I'm going to change it up. And the way that we're going to change that is I am going to do a top 30 now. I'm going to tell you the top 30 characters in the game, and I have put them in order. I have put them in order from 30 all the way up to what I think is the number one, uh, number one contender for the June tier list. Um, my plan is, is I have this tier list, boom, and I'm going to, every time that it changes, every month that it changes, we're going to see which characters rise and which characters fall with new characters being introduced and so on and so forth. And then my very last thing is that my tier list and the community's tier list are, uh, going to rival each other. So, uh, as you guys know, I, I, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. And so what I want to do is here's the tier list update. Here is number 21 or 30 through 21. And we're going to, we're going to run those. We're going to run those. So starting at number 30 is Jiro 2. Starting number 30 is Jiro 2. I probably could have put the character a little more in the middle, but that's okay. Why is Jiro what I believe the 30th best character? And it's simple. I think that the idea that you get from uh, Jiro's win con is still viable. She is a beautiful seven hand size character. I believe that the the life uh, symbol is incredible for her. And the big thing that hurt her is deflect. Deflect three kind of absolutely um, demolishes what Tasty Riff wants to do. But there are ways to interact with the deflect keyword, specifically on the life symbol. There are ways to interact with, with this. And I think that she is a seven hand size um, defensive character that can actually get there and has has not only the ability to win by dealing damage, right, as, as a way that a normal character wins, but she also can win by, um, uh, she can win by uh, the counters, the, the, the thing. Uh, my camera's a little low. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. Oh. I lost my camera. The alt win con underrated right now. Absolutely, Chief. The alt win con is underrated right now. I think that I mean that you have so much defense on the life symbol that you can you can just you can stall out and find the counters. If they ever get a deadlock, you just like sprint to the counters and you win. I haven't made a Jiro deck, and the reason is because I think she's 30th. I think she easily could go in top cut an event, and I would not be surprised in in, in the slightest. Moving on. 29th, I have Godzilla. I think, I think. That Godzilla is a trap. I think Godzilla is one of the biggest traps that you can possibly have. Um, the first form to destroy all foundations. Every time that I have ever seen it happen on uh, on stream, Godzilla dies the next turn. They don't get the win and they die. But having plus three damage to all of your five difficulty moves, as well as spend a momentum, your next check to block or play an attack gets plus two, are incredible are super super good i think the issue with godzilla truthfully is you have to get the momentum and i think that there are char better characters doing that and finding 34 right now is not that hard truthfully um uh, i think that i think finding 34 is not tough and he kind of wants to just high roll you and there are better characters doing the five difficulty high rolling than godzilla 29th i've got mirio Mirio is is an anomaly, and I he I, he might be he's probably the character because I had to shoot from the hip from this for this first list right he's the character that actually went on last I forgot that Mirio existed in the game and that's kind of the reason that I have him down so low I'm gonna turn my music down just a little bit so I can focus it's kind of the reason that I have him down so low 
uh, 28th, not 29th. Sorry if I misspoke. Um, this character is incredible. He lost the good symbol, but gained the chaos symbol. But I don't think that the chaos symbol gained a ton from girl power, but is gaining quite a bit from Godzilla. And so I'm not actually, I'm actually positive where I think Mirio is going to exist. I think Mirio is is probably on my list the high the the character highest to push up. He can have like the highest growth. But I think that people know how to play against this character. I think that hating on momentum is going to be huge because of how high Amajiki is on this list um, and how crazy that character is. And this character really gets away with like if you build a bad deck block zone wise, it is bad. You might want to buy Sox and Mirio at twenty eight. That's that's what I'm saying. Uh, Nega. I think I think Mirio is probably too low on my list. But again, he was the last person to get in, and it was very tough to make these decisions. It's really tough to put these in actual one through thirty order. I'm 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 having it. Um, both Mirio and gonna catch trades because they were packing momentum. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying, Chiefs. Moving on. Twenty seventh, I have Karama. Um, I think Karama is a fine character. I think that top response is really really good. It's really really good. And the bottom enhance is really strong. It's really, really strong. A plus one speed to all of my rival's moves is very good. But why is it? Why aren't people playing Rinku with this? Rinku also says plus one speed to everything, as well as if I've committed, I've stunned you, I get a free momentum. Sometimes that's better than negate your attack, especially on the symbols that like Rinku has. I think that Karama, the idea of card pool stuffing is just inherently strong. And I think that the reason people think Karama is so good is because they have leftover holes in their brain from Herp, Derp, I can tongue whip people. I think it's really hard to kill people with Karama. And I think Karama's survivability is not incredibly top tier to push him further up on this list. But I think that he is, he is good. But I think the other characters are just better. We'll move on. 26, Recovery Girl. This character under the life and good symbol, life good and water. All three of her symbols are absolutely cracked are absolutely insane. Nobody is playing this character. Nobody's playing this character. Uh, drop. I also like Riku better. I think Riku's very cool. Um, Recovery Girl having access to a ton of really potent powerfuls. A powerful four that you can just make a throw is insane. The life symbols, the uh, life symbols that you can, uh, life symbol cards that you can just like bring back in are crazy. Um, there is there is so much to be said about what Recovery Girl is doing, and we haven't seen Recovery Girl because, truthfully, the deck is boring. This is another character that I think that could really rise in stocks. I think 20, 26 is probably too low. The, um, the only big thing about Recovery Girl is that... Um, the only thing about Recovery Girl is that uh, nobody wants to play her because she's just... She's just so boring she's not flashy she's a control deck there's more interesting control decks and so i don't think like if we're talking like like if we if we were pl to play the game underrated overrated i think that she is underrated but i don't think that that's going to change on the next on the next list somebody would have to come in and, and absolutely do amazing 25th i have koji koda um the updated Life uh, ally Coda, I think is crazy. Um, I think I think the life Coda is nuts. We complained about capture evildoers, and this character has this character has gotten a tool under the life symbol that says. His commit cost of commit a foundation, choose an ally card in your card pool. It doesn't count as progressive. It gets to re-ready itself with the determined stance or whatever. It's like crazy. It's like crazy, crazy good. This character is messed up. Um, if you land a tasty riff with this character, you just, I think you just win the game on the spot. This character is crazy. The biggest thing is, is, under the life symbol in particular, right? Um, with the f you have to find damage, and they gave him a life, a uh, life ally momentum that gives plus X plus X, that scales. Like, like, C Coda is, Coda's really really good, and is a character that I'm excited to explore. But again, 
we've only seen successful lists over in the UK, and I don't know if they're going to be coming over here. Um, another another character that like it hurt me to put so low on the list, but like we just, there's just like a lot of really good characters in the game right now. Twenty fourth, we have Osui th uh, Osui three. Speaking of, speaking of <laughs> characters that it hurts to put down low. I think that Asui 3's time to shine is gone. I think she had her format and it's over. I think that this character's ability to fight my top 10 list, which we will get to, is the reason that she's so far down low. I think that this character, this character, has a character ever put up results? Not in a format that matters. Uh, this character feeds on very specific decks and I think that this character gatekeeps every deck that is not on this list. Absol like what beats like 10-0, everybody not on this list. I think it's so hard to to beat Asui if you're not in the upper echelon. But she can't contend with the with the absolute tip top meta unless you have really focused on what Asui is doing. Followed by, followed by, um, like she just like can't compete with like the top eight top ten like she just can't do it and so like it just it just hurts her so much um next we have jester at 23rd this is probably an overrated pick but you're on my youtube channel and so you're gonna listen to my jester thoughts the same idea that i had with coda applies to jester one of the biggest issues that jester has is every time that she wants to use her bottom ability i have to stun one myself and so i stun one on my turn and then i stun one on your turn so over the course of the turn, I stun two. That's I I say that your your first move is back alley haymaker every single turn. It's very hard for Jester to survive. But we were given a foundation that says Jester's bottom enhance does not have a cost. Enhance, commit this foundation, I re-ready it back up. It's crazy. It's so, so good. Um, and that is if you want to play like just like I I'm playing a silly arrow machine gun deck of just like i want to play the arrow machine gun like you could just play echo jester and probably roll people just good symbol echo jester is probably absolutely insane um don't even have to play necessarily like all the spell cards just play the good spell cards or chaos you ready chaos echo jester is probably crazy right like you get to play double trouble you get to play uh uh uh, spiral wave or whatever whatever the Azure uh, Echo is. You, like, you get to play crazy Echo moves and just, like, murder them? So good. So good. I'm, I am really, I'm really high on Jester. Um, I needed to put her on this first list. Nobody's gonna play her at St. Louis. She's gonna drop, for sure. 22nd is Vash the Stampede. There are, Device Strike gives characters free plays every turn. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Vash the Stampede. I like the mill for plus one speed. I'm a big fan of it. Um, I think that the all symbol uh, deck is very good. The the, um, the the loop deck, I think it's really strong. I think that there are characters playing the eight hand size character that gives speed and doing probably have better results than what Vash has got going on. I think that Vash is very good. And I think I, you tell me that Vash is in, in top cuts, right? Um you see you see vash in top cuts you're not surprised but i couldn't push him up to the to the next level because i've got some like like you're looking at vash and going oh, this character's so good but like he only gives two speed endeavor does that and eventually levels up oh i could discard an attack card to draw three well endeavor does that but go, goes like becomes a automatically draws an attack to like to kill you like, there's just characters doing what this guy does, but, like, a little bit better. The only reason to really play Vash is his symbols. And I don't think that his symbols... Under Death and Life, there's better characters to play. Under the All symbol, I think that, at the moment, the loop is too fragile. I think that people are playing a lot of Foundation hate. Um, specific Foundation, Spot Foundation hate. And Vash is just gonna get, gonna get rolled for it. Up next, my last one for this uh, list is Momo3. I think Momo 3 is good. I think Momo 3 has an issue with finding damage that can be fixed, but you have to assemble Voltron. 
I think if you can figure out how to survive and play a 40 minute game one, I think Momo 3 is incredibly, incredibly strong. She punishes your rival for having a consistent deck. If their deck is consistent and they play a bunch of non-flip, multi-numbered multi, uh, cards, right? Uh, cards of the same, same like if they play dual, tr two, three, or four of the same card. I, I don't know how to say that eloquently. You just nerf all of their attacks into the ground. And then, and then, push up and through. 80% of my losses to Momo are by mill. That 100%. Duplicates, Rastly, thank you so much. Duplicates are, are is a perfect. 80% of my Momo. I've milled Momo, right? Because they put their entire stage, the, their entire disco pile into their stage. And they 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 go, I, I hoard these like a dragon and I can't do it, right? Um, And so... When it comes to what like what Momo can do, she doesn't have like a crazy offensive output. It is part of the reason that I like things like um, uh, Spirit Gun Mega. I literally bought this card today to put in my Momo decks to try and end the game. End the game. <laughs> I want to kill people. And I think that like you you have to figure out ways under these three symbols to end the game because she's not doing it on her face. Not well enough at least. And so there you have it. This that's my that's my bottom thirty, right? Starts with Jiro, Godzilla, Mirio, Karama, Recovery Girl, Coda, Asui Three, Jester, Vash, Momo. When you look at this, when you look at this, you realize that there's so many more characters that you're not thinking of that aren't on this list yet. And I gotta say, this section right here was the absolute hardest to put in order it was really really hard comparing it to the rest of the field comparing it to its own bracket it's pretty rough but we're gonna move on to 20 in 20th i have elder togoro i think elder togoro is another one of those characters that is underrated i think elder togoro's stocks could go way up he has got that same life uh, life evil death are so hot right now probably the best three symbols in the game probably the best three symbols in the game because of the amount of versatility that you can do with the character and elder Shigoro is the definition of versatility right um I, I remember pippa was mad at me because she previewed elder Togoro and it was like the most versatile character yet and i had yusuke and i was like the most versatile character yet and she goes no that's not true. Have you read my character? <laughs> and I was like, it's clickbait, but don't yell at me. But she's right. Elder Tagoro is the most diverse strategy-wise character you can have in the game. Discard a non-foundation card. Choose any attack you discard pile, and you can try to play as your next thing. You get to play a ton of actions, and you don't get punished. You get to play a ton of assets, and you don't get punished. You get to, to transform any of your attack cards into the best attack card in your discard pile that you need at this exact moment. Under all three of these symbols, that is an insane thing to do. Not to mention the idea of I'm Hawks on every single attack if I want it. On my turn and on your turn. And the destroy foundation most of the time is not a cost there are things inside of our game that say if i destroy this do this cool bonus ability if you are looking to play a an a seven hand size defensive character you should look at elder tagoro elder tagoro is is should be on your radar of a of a very cool character to play um and this character because you can choose any attack discard pile and just play as your next form not a first form your next form you can find lethal lines it's very strong imagine imagine under the under uh life just looking at my opponent and like having checked a uh 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 um a black abyss and just being like oof i guess i'm gonna play this uh six low five every turn or five low six every turn i'm gonna make it hit <laughs> sorry sorry buddy 19th biako people think biako is a good character <laughs> People think Biako is a good character, and and I tend to agree. But the best thing about Biako is his bottom enhance mill three. My rival flips the foundation, and there are ways to do that inside of the deck that are probably better than being forced to play Biako. Um, I think that in order for Biako to be relevant inside of a match, he has to find one of these big five diff foundations. 
You have to find it. And if you as the rival have any way to interact with what biako has got going on, it it's... This character just is a five-hand size character that doesn't really do anything, right? The way that you can describe this character is... <clears throat> this character, when you find the five-diff foundation is a way, way, way better Nomu or a or a or a better woman if you find the five diff because you get the you get the five damage, you get to flip they, they start flip their whole board and you get to stack their stack one check uh, essentially twice, maybe three times per game, right? Depending on, on how big your deck is. Followed by if you don't find if you have, if I find a one or two dam two difficulty foundation and that's all I find for the whole game, plus two damage on my stuff is nothing. That's Mirio stats. Why am I not just playing Mirio? Mirio changes the zone and has way better symbols to do the thing that we're trying to do. Why am I just not just a different character? And so, like, the highs and the lows that Biako can represent um, is, is in my opinion, not worth putting him higher than higher than this spot. If you can consistently make that mill three, they flip a foundation. If you can make that work, foundations are really strong right now. Like, really, really strong. So, having my opponent having a completely blank board, the character scales really high. But again, you got to find the damage in order to clear out the game because 38 is not a big number anymore. It's just not. It's not a big number. It's annoying, right? But 38 is not what it used to be. This used to be an, an impossible wall to, to climb. It's just not anymore, though. 18th, you have Younger Tagoro. I think Younger Tagoro is still very playable. I think this is a perfect nerf to how this character should be playing. This character finally is going to be playing the way that he well, should have been designed to play from the absolute beginning. Um, the Enhance now has a cost. You can't see it on the screen, but it now has a cost of Enhance, commit one foundation. Your attack gets plus X damage. X is the number of foundations you have in your stage. Write it down. The throw idea still works on um, on the all... Uh, on Honestly, all three of the symbols. He's, he's an incredible throw deck. He is such an insane snowball of a deck that he plays the way now that he was he he was played in the uh at the height of his career but now he's actually fair and can't accidentally roll you in the in the early game right he he is he is a late game character he wants to play the late game he, he he's an on turn two turn three sometimes turn four you're not supposed to use that bottom enhance it is when you have a gluttonous of foundations when you are deep in deadlock you have tons of deadlock threats of your own that you punish your opponent and go hey you're in deadlock i'm going to end the game now and all of these are going to get plus five plus six damage he is a spirit bomb of a deck and that strategy can exist especially under these three symbols the block traps that you have on um death uh on all three of these symbols of like uh Airy Smiles under uh, All or Showdown under Good. Uh, sorry, under uh, it should have under uh, uh, Death and Evil is like it's very strong. It's very very strong. A lot of good defensive things that you can do in order to scale you to that late game. Very strong. Up next, I have on seventeenth place. I have Woman, and this is including what I think the uh, the Godzilla uh, cards are doing. Um, Woman is a better version of what Ochako 2 can do. And Ochako 2 was always in the like the conversation of like top 18 to top like like 10 characters in the game at any one point. If you have a crazy run with woman, a good bracket, some good luck, you're going to tear through a tournament and it's easy. Um the, I've described this before, the reason that I like woman is she is Ochako 2. That makes every attack that I play into hulking grimace. <laughs> it's just like giving plus one plus four to your stupid four difficulty moves is crazy. It's so crazy. And then response commit for the box of your attack gets minus three speed, and you redraw a card to help you block. It's crazy. It's so good. And then under two of her symbols, evil and void, you have access to um, combined firepower, which in this character is not a fair interaction. Any incubating character woman herself you just get free mid blocks from the discard pile and it is so hard to to break this this uh to break her board if you are playing a mono mid uh, uh mono mid deck or or if you're like you're you're like pokes or mids you're just gonna get combined firepowered and you'll never land a poke it's really really hard to push this character if mids are, are some of your best options um 
this character i believe is underrated but i was i was a little um conservative with, with where i i put her and i want to i i believe on paper in some of the characters that are higher above her but i think her results might push her up and above and technically this i made the, these slides before the um before david tomb's um girl power godzilla event where i believe fire woman a symbol i haven't even talked about on this character won the whole tournament um, and that deck was a like slim 60 card. I'm just gonna absolutely kick your kick your teeth up. She was giving plus plus uh, one plus four uh, speed to her prominence burns, um, <laughs> which is really good. <laughs> which is really really good. So this is a lot of like if you like five hand size aggro, I would rather play this than Biako for for example. Up next, I have Mount Lady two. Um, another one of those um, characters that. If this character, this character could go win a tournament if she won the die roll every game. Every every match she played, she won the die roll. And every hand she opened had two of her uh, number 26 pro hero, whatever her, whatever her number is. Her 2-6 that gives her an extra speed. If she won the die roll every time and opened two of those every time, she would win in the entire tournament. And it, and it wouldn't be close. But the games that you go second and the games that you don't find that that specific card early are a real struggle because this character wants to wants to play and finish the game on turn four. Turn four is the absolute cap for this character. We want to have our we want to have our five counters on turn four and I go bing bang boom you are dead. If you go to the late game you really struggle and you actually have to try and Man, this is going to sound rude and sound lame. You actually have to really try for your wins after after turn four. Turn five, you start to sweat. And every turn afterwards, it becomes a little tougher and a little tougher to break it. Luckily, she does have, like, the unblockable clause. But by the time that I get to the unblockable clause, my opponent probably found their own 30 damage. Um, because if they can stave off what I'm doing, they're probably going to hit me back uh, really hard. But I, I like Mount Lady where, where she is. Up next, I have Toga 4. Probably... Probably an overrated pick, but I think that there's so much unexplored space with what Toga 4 has got going on. And I think that her top enhance is not a fair ability that has ever been fair on any universe's card ever. It just it just hasn't. So I put her exactly in the middle because I truthfully don't know what this character is doing. Gaining the plus one damage and the and gaining the health is is very good. It's very, very strong. But Toga 4, under all three of her symbols, doing really unique, different things is, like, really scary. Like, watching the evil version, like, mill a bunch of womans, mill a bunch of men out of twos. So, on offense, we kill you. On defense, we we say that you don't, you, you, you can't kill us. Watching the good, uh, the life version... Um, play Nezures and Karamas of like I get minus two speed to every move and I don't care about my health total. I get I, I plus one repeatable speed on everything. Like imagine Karama as a as a six hand size twenty nine health character that can actually like take a punch, right? Um, that's scary. On the turn that I want to kill you, I just I I give plus one damage and heal one, and I have repeatable speed. It's like this character is really really scary. I don't know what the all symbol version of the deck does yet, but I mean we can figure it out. I think this character is very, very strong. But it really depends on what are people doing to experiment with this character in order to push her above and beyond, right? 14th, I have King Ghidorah. 14th, I have King Ghidorah. This character is in... If we went back to the uh, tier list, he would be in the Mineta 2, I'm very annoying to kill tier. But I think he has a slight problem actually killing you. Um, he only gets to do his enhanced commit, remove a card from your hand, play an attacker foundation once per turn cycle, right? He makes you do some really weird math. I think King Ghidorah is real is, is very similar to Mineta too. of if you don't know how to, how to fight against this character, you're just going to lose, right? If you, if you go against this character in a really, in a, in, from a weird angle, you're, you're just, it's not going to work out. His ability to play under the evil symbol, all of the Hiei cards, followed by, um, followed by, uh, true 100% final blast or whatever that card's called, <laughs> true 100% uh, omega, 
<laughs> Omega Beam. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, his ability to play that card, both on offense and on defense, is very, very strong. It's very, very strong. Um, but the thing is, is like, What's his game plan outside of that? And can you interact with his game plan? Um, it's very it's very tough to kill this guy. But if you just have a game plan going in, you can get it. You can get it. Up next, I have Ryukyu. Um, I think if there are any new players... I mean, this is just the new player-friendly character. But I think that if you have... If you have any experience in the game, you can just see why this character is nuts. You can just see why this character is cracked, snapped in half. Every time that you play a fun, play a, a blank card, an attack card, essentially, right? You draw a card and steal a momentum. You draw a card, a thing that is tough to do in the game. A thing that, a thing that doing extra of is always good. And stealing momentum is something, like, illegal. You're not supposed to do that. And so, like... This card is so good. And then once you crack their wall or they make a mistake, you smell blood in the water. Um, you just like push plus four damage on everything and you just kill them. She has the earth and life symbol. And those got some crazy cards with Momo stuff. Um, her, her, uh, her foundation from girl power, discard a momentum, play a ball committed. This deck is minus three damage is insane in her. If you can find room for that card, she doesn't have 28 health because of how much momentum she generates. She sometimes has 50. Like, she's got as much health as Jester, and her block mods are way better. And her consistency is way better because every time you play a blank card, you draw a card and... and gr every time I play an attack, I draw a card and grab three health. Like, when you say that out loud, you go, oh, that's not fair. That's not a thing, fair thing to do. And and sometimes it's not, oh, I'll discard for minus three damage. Sometimes it's, you know, I played Armor of the Wolf, and so I will just kill you because of this. Um, Very, very strong card. Very strong card. Uh, I, I, if Ryukyu went and won St. Louis, I wouldn't be surprised, but I think that Ryukyu is kind of boring. She's like a six hand size aggro character that your cards are blank. And you just have to like really be in love with the pure mechanics of universes in order to pick this character up and really appreciate her. 12th, I have Jin. And I probably am undervaluing what Jin's got going on. I think mill one for plus two speed, minus two speed, or plus 2.5 is really good. But I think that Jin has the same issues that Eraserhead has, where he's so good that you have to know how to beat this character. And sometimes it doesn't matter, but sometimes it doesn't matter, right? 27 is not difficult to find. As long as you are not an absolute dummy and you don't run face first into his cancel, um, d defeating Jin, you just have to have a good game plan for with that said, Jin can be really explosive. If Jin finds the good ones and he like plus puts plus 2.5 speed on every move that he does and you don't have a way to interact with that, you're going to lose. But there are plenty of other characters in the format that um there's plenty of other characters in the format that say, you know, I'm going to give plus 2 speed for for basically free. Um that have a have a little bit more of an aggressive game plan going into it. Jin wants big long strings and um and he doesn't actually like the way that he wins the game on his face is I'm gonna put a bunch of speed on on printed basic moves. He's gonna find the damage elsewhere. So like if you can do the heavy lifting on like where can I find this bonus damage to actually close out the game, I think Jin is cool. Um, but doesn't quite have the survivability that a racer had of of like hey I'm gonna say your character doesn't work and I'm gonna go find a mid block and I'm gonna a minus two speed and I'm gonna breaker one you and at, at the last second I'm gonna commit my character and draw two bonus blocks. Okay, I'll block one more time because I have re like like. When you compare the two of, like, what Jin's doing and what Eraserhead is doing, like, it's very obvious that Eraserhead's just, like, head and shoulders above. I think Jin's a very suitable replacement for what Eraserhead was. Also at 12. And then 11th, I have Overhaul. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Overhaul hasn't gone anywhere. And I think Overhaul stocks are still high. But I wanted to showcase the other top 10. I think that this, this and Mirio are the two characters that I was like, I'm probably undervaluing where I'm putting these people really. I had overhauled in my top 10 row like three times in this list and I moved him back down to 11th and I would move him back up and I'm moving back down and I would move back up and move back down. And he just he just jumped, 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 jumped. I, this, this was one of the hardest spots. Um, He lost the punch identity with the life symbol but I think that he gained 
a lot more, right? Imagine being able to play your true 100% unleashed as the fourth card you played, but it was on a six, <laughs> right? Like imagine playing Falling Skies as the fifth card you played on a four. Um, imagine like, like you just get like the block tricks that we have, right? Um, under the earth symbol, uh, uh, being able to play under earth or, uh, sorry, under the life symbol, being able to play, um, uh, armor of the wolf can't kill you if you're overhaul. You just can't. I will take and I will put a, uh, uh, evade copy in my stage and I will stare at you and go, one of those armor of the wolves isn't killing me. It just isn't. I don't care how many cards are in my card pool. I will overhaul and I will block. It's on a seven. I will check my five. I will commit my two. I'm good. You just like can't die to Tar the Wolf with this character if you're playing the life symbol. And I think that's that's pretty cool. And not to mention like he's so open-ended when it comes to his like attack packages that he's allowed to play. I mean, we've got like low evil lows, we've got um earth highs, we've got we he he could play the uh the uh life ally package, right? You could you could play um dark shadow inside of this guy, right? Like like you could just do that. Um, imagine, imagine overhaul, you know, building in face down a, uh, uh, a shadow and just like as the third card, Hey, here's a six low for five that I'm going to make for seven. Okay. Now it's got my momentum and now we're off to the races. Like this character has a lot of moves to do, right? Taste overhaul is scary. Agreed. And that's on a life symbol. Like this could be, this could be an ally deck, right? Instead of playing Karama, you could play earth overhaul. You still have earth. Like there's just, he's so open-ended. But I think people have figured out how to play it against this character. And like I think that in order to play him, you just have to be really creative. You have to you have to be pushing the envelope and really want to play this guy. I would be very I'm happy that Andrew Holder doesn't play this game anymore because he's not still on overhaul and he's not still grinding this character. I think he would be an absolute uh, he would he would just go win St. Louis again. Um he, like he would just go win another regional because overhaul takes time to really grind in and be like, this is exactly the perfect deck that I should play. And so here's my top, uh, top twice. Again, when you look at this list, is there anybody, question for you guys, before we move on, is there anybody in the second row that you would push up, oh, sorry, anybody in the third row that you would push up to the second row? Ones and twos. Is there anybody that would push up? Nejere two. Nejere two is not on my uh, not on my list. Mirio. I again. I think I think Mirio could be higher. I think Mirio could be higher. Momo right on the cusp. She's twenty first. Okay. My mom. Okay. I I will let I I'll Brandon. I'll let my mom know that you think that, she, that my mom is the top top twenty in the game. That's very that's very kind of you. <laughs> that's that's really really kind. Okay, we'll move on to my 10th place. Guys, Shigaraki hasn't gone anywhere. Guys, Shigaraki is still insane. And the the um, death and evil are obvious, are obvious that, like, what you do. And then the order symbol has gotten a huge leg up, right? Like, uh, imagine the mono mid Shigaraki that gets to draw a bunch of cards and, and um, gets to play uh, double jumbo whatever, or um, Shigaraki under these three symbols, you get access now to the new Shigaraki card of like, hey, this is a, the 2-4 the flip minus 2 to your check doesn't fail. You just have four more instances of of, of, uh, of twisty surroundings? That's crazy, right? I think it's, I think it's impossible to kill this character on turn 2. It's just, it's just crazy good. Um, not to mention he draws a bunch of cards and like, it's like, it's, it's very, very strong. Um, again, he's got the classic issue of how do you close out the game? And with things like true 100%, uh, I keep trying to say 200% smash, true 100% uh, uh, unleashed. You have that way to close out the game. I have 10 foundations. You have 10 foundations. This is, this is for 10. I'll minus your check. You died. Ninth, I have Mina 2. Uh, Mina 2. Is such a silly six hand size character. Talk up talk about the world's best glow up. I don't think there's ever been a zero to hero success story that I've ever seen in universes. Literally ever. Maybe Sniper Joe for all for all my old heads. Maybe Sniper Joe. Um a, a character that like wasn't 
playable even a little bit, right? It, like, she she didn't in set two, set three, set four, set five, didn't exist as a character. She was actually the bottom bottom of the barrel. Set six comes out. We get Jet Burn. And the character instantly jumped to top 30, right? She's, she would be on my bottom row. She'd be, she'd be like 27th, right? You get now girl power and it shoots up. You get Yu Yu Hakusho, you get girl power. It shoots up even higher. This character is a menace if she draws the nuts. <laughs> if she doesn't draw the nuts and, again, she goes to a late game, it is, it's pretty tough to win. It's kind of tough. But I think that under the death symbol specifically, I think there's enough ways to be consistent on her turn two, turn three. Trace Eyes is not a fair card in this character to to really push and, and get some pretty consistent wins. For eighth, I have Toga three. Toga three is very strong. This character is very strong and is and has had a very similar but faster glow up of Mina. Um, I, I think I, I think that Toga 3 is a character that if you connect, if you connect and and hit with your move, she's off to the races. But if you can she's she's stain as stain one esque, actually, right? If you can just keep her off of the momentum, it is a little it's a little tough to do the thing and if her top response is like crazy her top response is super super good but if you ha if your rival has any amount of like hey don't commit my my foundation hate right keeping airy safe problem solving if she, if they have the you stunned me knock it off kind of stuff like the character kind of still flounders the the thing is is like that first enhance has to be really good and you have to be able to steal momentum pretty efficiently um as soon as you can figure out how to do that i think the character character rolls pretty well um and uh, Walk the Dog's a hell of a drug. <laughs> Walk the Dog's crazy in this character. It's very, very strong. So, like, people should play more Stun 8 or they're just going to lose the Toka 3. That's just what it is. Seventh place, I have Mechagodzilla Kiryu. Now, this character is probably overrated. I'm probably overrating this character. But I think that this character is really playable on every turn of the game. I think if he goes second on turn two, if he can find the cheating foundations, he's a five-hander, it's sometimes tough, um, and he can build out a stage, he can just, and he finds one of the action, he'll just kill you the next turn. If he finds action, four attack cards, he'll kill you. And then on turn six, because he draws and then slams the moves, it's just like, it's just like the thing, right? But if he doesn't find it, but if, he, but if he doesn't find it, though, what do you, what do, you do then? What do, what do you do then? There's, there's the question, right? Yeah, he might he might be overrated. You're drop. You got to do it after the stream, buddy. You're distracting. You're distracting the hell out of me. Just do it after. Do it after the damn talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a little and also also I mean we didn't even talk about the other part, right? He's got the Earth symbol, and he has a Art of the Wolf symbol with uh, the ability to discard the bonus cards that he has for EX3 and Powerful. And so it's like, it's like really, really, it's potent. It is a potent ability to like close out games even on turn two. It's just, it's so easy to just like hit 30 damage just like just that kind of for free, right? Um, I think Earth might be his best build. I agree. I think I think it's Earth, but there's there's an idea of um. Uh, there's an idea of the good symbol being something. I think the other symbol is kind of unplayable. But, I, I mean, Earth you get... Actually, Earth is just the best symbol because you get the action. The action... The two actions out of the Godzilla stuff is, like, unfair and really pushed a lot of a lot of this. Sixth place, I have Nicholas D. Wolfwood. The things that people complained that Younger Tagore was doing last format, Wolfwood has done consistently and hasn't stopped doing. The difference between Old Tagoro and Wolfwood is that Old Tagoro could also play like New Tagoro, where he could play super late in the game and still kill you. Wolfwood can't. Wolfwood can't. He just flounders after turn five. He just, like, loses it. Like, that's lame. Um, 
But on turn two, turn three, turn four at the latest, if this guy has poked you and sculpted you and draws five attacks, you just explode them. They just die. Um, it's so fast. It's so strong. Being an eight-hand size character with plus three to all your moves is, like, very good. But on some most of his symbols, he's missing some key things, right? Like, I'm a big fan of him on the death symbol, so you, you lose vile seizing. You don't just don't get that card. It doesn't have the weapon or, or range keyword. And so, like, there's a big deadlock threat. But they printed a new one in girl power. Onto the all symbol... Um, I don't know why you're playing the all symbol and you're not just playing a different character. Under the fire symbol, you get cremation. Cremation is stealing a bonus uh, card, a bonus momentum on turn on my rival's turn two is like or, or, my rival's turn one. Me going second is crazy. You play your three foundations and I slam a momentum. It's insane. It's so it's so nuts. And everybody, I mean, everybody's popping off about it. Twisting Azure Inferno is still not a fair card, and this guy just wears it the best now. It's not Tagoro anymore. It's just Wolfwood, and so a. Twisting Ezra deck will always exist in the in the top echelon and will always be one of the premier aggro decks. And Wolfwood just wears the best. You guys ready for top five? Top five characters that I think in the game. Top five in order. I think the fifth best character in the game is Rodan. Seven hand size, 21 health character under all three of these symbols. The ability to remove to get plus or minus speed is the way that you get to kill people. Playable all committed. And we already had a six hand size menace of any character that can look at the top two cards of their deck is not a fair character. You can get a game loss for looking at the top card of your deck. And this character is allowed to look at the top four and put them back how they want in any order. It's not even a scouting the information. It is, I have scouted the information and I have changed the future. I've changed the results. This character is very, very strong. Under the Void symbol has access to um, uh, has access to uh, combined firepower. So not only do you have easy block modifiers, uh, or sorry, easy minus speed, but you get free mid blocks out of your discard pile. Under the Air symbol, giving your air attacks bonus speed and confirming your checks is crazy. Under the All symbol, having things like um, Sugar Rush power up on turn two, instantly turning on your uh, enhanced commit. Look at the top four to consistently know when am I supposed to draw? When am I supposed to check? You just take the, you take all the randomness out of the game and you have a defensive ability to, to boot. Like it's, it's so, so good. Um, like, like I'm, I'm thinking of like, what are the offensive capabilities that bottom enhance of like knowing exactly how the, how the next four cards are for my attacking turn. It's just as important. If I'd like build to pass hold four, I know what those four block checks are, are going to be. I know what the four block checks are going to be. I know what the block modifiers of those cards that I'm checking is going to be. I know exactly how to defend myself on defense. This Rodon is such a math gamer's delight. It's so, so good. Um, a character that should be, if, if, if Rodon's not on your on your bingo card for St. Louis, it needs to be. It just needs to be. Fourth best character in the game. Mimic. Chaos and Earth got an absolutely massive upgrade with the Godzilla decks. Um, this character's ability to take the assets that are so good, so strong, that they can't um, <clears throat> that they can't be used to commit to pass checks, and he negates that rule. He just negates it once once per check. I just turn my turn my uh, uh, card sideways and say, "Hey." This one passed. And that response once per turn is better than Endeavor's once per Endeavor 3's once per game. Because it's once per turn per cycle. Right? I think that I think that the way that you actually make this character like fair and balanced is you take that that top response and you make it a respond commit. Because picking up a move on my turn to kill you with, and then I didn't kill you. I checked an asset to block. I pick up the best block zone that I have or the attack that I'm going to kill you next turn with is really messed up, guys. The assets don't check bad cards. Check an attack, add walk the dog is messed up. It's so crazy. Not to mention the amount of damage that this guy puts out is crazy. 
he puts out so much damage and with things like knots flask with things like like there's so many crazy assets that you get access to with mimic that he just gets to just kind of kill you for free he kills you for free and that 25 health that is supposed to be a glass cannon is not because of minus damage and, and other things the, the the crazy strong assets that you have in stage to help keep you alive it's it's really really good um he is only so low because um uh because sometimes there are ways to kind of cheese him right uh toga three actually eats this guy's lunch money because you just stun out the the three foundations that he built and you only get to commit one card to pass checks right he has to find triggers in order to fight that character and so if you have any amount of cool stun active to you if you can hate on his board mimic actually has 25 health because he can't get all the the foundations uh, the assets committed to 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 push down so like there is some real counterplay into mimic um but with that said you just like you you're just allowed to just slam your opponent on turn two turn three and he's so consistent with finding his uh, his attack turns uh, he's he's honestly he feels like a Yu-Gi-Oh deck if you have a Yu-Gi-Oh player and you want them to play the game and you want them to be competitive at the game hand the mimic because you just go pick up the best thing out of your disco pile every twice per turn cycle it's crazy third best character of the game amajiki amajiki's nuts and he's been nuts and he stayed nuts and he's only getting better he, he, he only got more stuff um there are ideas under the chaos and water symbol to start adding in cool godzilla stuff um uh under the chaos symbol we have access to you know the uh the dark shadow things right um the ally package momentum is is really really strong it's really really strong um but there is um there is some very potent ideas that Amajiki just hasn't lost. And the reason that he's not second or third is because I think that people have to hate on um people have to hate on momentum to play the game right now. If you are not if you don't have some sort of momentum hate in the game, then it's just not going to work out. It's just not gonna work out. Number two. Oh, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> a charcoal uh, a charcoal four. Uh, this character is the best turn two character in the game. She just is. Uh, flip for plus three or plus three is crazy. The water symbol is not fair with this character. Rewriting your foundations. Turning your once per game abilities of I will flip this foundation into not once per game by unflipping them is unfair. This character is, and, and I've, I've done my best to say as PC as possible, this character is fucked up on turn two. If you can scale her out into the late game, if you can get her to turn all her foundations face down, she becomes very manageable. You can survive. But on turn two, turn three, you should almost never attack this character. You just shouldn't. Unless the, the way that you attack, unless unless attacking this character gives you like a plus two or plus three to what you're doing on your board, just build and hold your high blocks. Build every mid, build every low, hold your high blocks. Never poke this character on turn two, turn three, because you have to survive. You have to live. I, I can't stress it enough. If you if you stumble a little bit, she will run you down and break you. She will run you down and destroy you. It's very, very strong. And then my number one character. Oh, and I also think that she's playable on all three symbols. I'm a big water fan. Obviously, you've seen the grinds here on the channel. I think that the water symbol is incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, the grind is is showing that this character is super, super good. It's it's rough. It's it's very, very tough. Um, we'll talk about auto interest after the video. And then my number one character is just Endeavor 3. Endeavor 3 won the last two events. He won Worlds, he won the Vegas Regional, and I don't think he's going anywhere. Um, I think that Endeavor 3 is incredible. Endeavor 3 is my number one pick at the moment to go into St. Louis. Um, I For everybody at home, I'm on double double Jumbo Fist Endeavor 3. Um, giving plus four, plus two to all your moves is very, very strong. I think Endeavor 3 is really, really good. And he gives kind of the same idea of what Ochako was doing with... I have to flip a foundation for a little bit better speed, but Endeavor says I get to mill four for plus two. So I'm I'm not I'm not um, I'm not really losing anything. In fact, in fact, I am powering up to once I do cycle, I'm getting five stats for free. Five stats for free. That's woman level stats on um, f for free. And I get to draw a free card, and I'm a six-hander with 31 health. 
right? She's a five-hander with 34 that has a defensive draw. And, and like, I'm giving woman level stats once I've cycled through the game. And there's so much milling inside of what uh, all three of these symbols can do that it's pretty easy that on, like, turn four, turn five to get there. I just think this character is really consistent at doing, uh, at doing this thing. And then... Once you have poked your opponent down and you've played really solid fundamental universes, you just, like, get to go grab the win con that you need and play it for free. You're just like, oh, this this one is really good. Boop, there it is. I've won the game. And so, like, it's, it's, it's pretty rad. And so there you have it. There is my top 30. There's my top 30. Um, I do think, I mean, this is... This is my first one, and the goal is is that we're going to see these move. We're going to see these change. These are just my opinions. We're going we're to talk about it uh, after the video about my honorable mentions. Um, I've already seen people shouting in chat about, hey, where are the characters that I'm that I'm not talking about? And there it is. So, like, things are going to go up. Things are going to go down. You're going to see arrows all over the place. But, 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 I want to talk about your guys' tier list. The time that I made this, and I don't know if it's changed or not, I put out a thing. Um, I put out a, uh, a, what am I saying? I put out a bulletin of, um, where do you think the, the, the community, where do you think, uh, what do you think of the top, uh, decks? And whenever I posted it, I think we have, I will go double check. Um, we had 18,000 total votes happen on this project. So, thank you guys. That's very, very cool of you to, uh, to jump in and give me almost 20,000 votes. Incredible. And so, this is a really curated list of what you guys think are the top 30 characters. And it might have changed ever so slightly since I did. I think I, I think I put this, uh, I think I put this, uh, in my order hopefully this goes here yes i think i put this in the order that uh that was on the day but i just want to compare the notes and so i can now put them side by side and so you guys valued characters you guys said that overhaul was first and mine was 10th or mine was mine was 11th right um Jin is not on your list he is on mine right and so like there are ideas that you guys have of what do you what do you think should be higher should be lower if people thought and, and you ready where is bionic he's like mini endeavor three that's a great question man where is bionic where is bionic jen wasn't on my poll that's you know lois that's fair that's fair that's fair that's fair let me there's a small asterisk i messed up my poll and jen buoy and Chu, i believe weren't on my poll thank you lois thank you lois for, for for remembering for me they weren't on the poll so Jen wasn't in your top because it, he couldn't be. Um, uh, where is King Ghidorah? Why is Hie up here? Why is Hatsume up here? Why is Fourth Kind up here? Why is Rappa up here? And, and these are the these are the ideas that we get to to mess around with. Um, is there a last slide? Where's Toga Three? It's a great question. Where's Toga Three? Not on here. Not on here. Throw one more slide. There's not one more slide. And so that's it. There's the uh, there's the end of the there's the end of it. This is how I'm gonna be doing tier lists from now on. Is this is how tier lists are going to work? Join me in July, and we were going to we're going to see how my opinions change and how your opinions change as the uh, as the meta evolves and we see regionals and such happening. Uh, so with that said, you guys, if you are watching over on YouTube and you want to come join the conversation, the after party uh, of the video, come join me over on twitch.tv slash Sam Cardwell um, and have your vote uh, voice heard. Come jump on to the um, uh, come jump on the discord and you'll have access to the poll for the community stuff and yada, yada, yada. Do the cool YouTube stuff. Video's too long. Goodbye.